Well, welcome everyone to Circus Time for Dolores and thank you for uh, joining the Zoom class. So what the first thing I wanna do is show you guys some variations. This of course is the original design and um, with the tassel and the little uh, circus animals. And uh, it, it was named Circus Time for Dolores because I was making, I wanted another Christmas ornament and I was coming up with the design, I was working on it. And Dolores looked at it and said, oh, it's a circus tent. And I said, no, it's a Christmas ornament. No, it's a circus tent and you need animals on it. I don't want animals, it's a Christmas ornament. Nope, it's a circus tent. And, and so I decided, okay, I can't argue with Dolores. And then she said, and now you have to name it after me. So that is why it is now circus time for Dolores and it's got the cute little animals on it. But it was supposed to be just a Christmas ornament. And so let me show you some other variations. So I will be uh, using this, this as an example of how to add the ribbon. So you just got to kind of use your imagination and picture it. But see, I put in a blue tassel and because it's going to match my blue ribbon and the little blue dots. And then you all saw at the back of your instructions where I got lazy and I only did um, the center. Uh, I only did one of the center tubes. I did it a little bit longer. And then I did a little um, Swarovski fringe on the bottom. And then I stitched on some um, Monty's to give it a little extra sparkle all of these little Montes on it. So that's, that's that one. Then I got all excited and decided, well, okay, well, we, now we have to have a Halloween one. So this motif is from the Natalie Shea's uh, candy cane holders and the Halloween version. And I just stole that motif and did a center tube with that. And of course, changing my, um, changing the green and white to orange and black and put a nice little fringe on the bottom so it makes a Halloween ornament. And then on this variation, I alternated the uh, stripes in the center uh, tube, alternated them green and red. Thought that would be really cute. I got inspired walking through Hobby Lobby and looking at ribbon because that's what inspires us. I found this ribbon and decided, oh, I had to have an ornament for this ribbon. So see how cute that is? And it's got a little metallic. -y. I don't know if you can tell if you guys can see that or not, but a little metallically glitter in it. So that ribbon is gonna go in the center of this guy uh, once I get it put together. So those are some variations you can do. Now, you can't have more than, um, three different color stripes. So you've got white, green, and red. Um, you couldn't do green, red, and blue because there's only, there's 14 of the dominant color stripes going around and 14 is only divisible by two and seven. So you can't really do three. I tried and ended up, I came around on the other end and I had two of the same color together and that just doesn't work unless you like it that way, and then you can do it that way. So there's your variations. And now I'm going to show you, let me look at my notes. Um, I ate too much bread. Do you need a No. And I'm gonna show you guys how to add a hanger. You can eat chicken? Mm -hmm. Okay, we got someone. Martha, I'm going to mute you. There we go. Okay. Um, I'm going to show you all adding the hanger and adding the hanger. Let me see. I'm going to add the hanger onto this guy. And that is um, on page 16. It's kind of not going in order, but that's okay. Um, so the instructions for adding the hanger is right here. So the important thing in adding the hanger for you guys. Um, Where's the end of my thread? There it is. Hold on, let me get this needle threaded. There we go. Okay, so while we're waiting, what do you get if 
the uh, vampire bites the snowman. You get frostbite. Okay, dumb joke for today. Now, okay, so what the instructions tell you to string on three, three beads, then a crystal, then 30 beads, a crystal, and three more beads. So that's what I've done. And in the instructions on that very last row on the top, you can see where, um, okay, in the instructions, it's a white bead, but mine, of course, is a Halloween, so it's going to be a, a black one. So you've got one on this side and one over on the other side. So we're going to use those two beads to attach our hanger. And that will make it hang nice and straight where um, this part will be the focus part in between the hanger. Okay, so then after we string our beads, we're gonna come in through the, through the uh, bead on the other side. In the instructions, it calls it a W bead. Then we're gonna pick up three more W's, one, two, three. And then what you're gonna do is go skip these first three beads you guys see that? We're going to skip the first. Hang on. Okay, we're going to skip the first three beads and we're going to go into the Swarovski again. And then we're going to go through all 30 of the beads up to the next Swarovski or the next crystal. So let me do that. Now, when you do this, just be careful you don't accidentally skip a bead because then you'll be able to see your thread. So make sure you're going through all the beads. If I can stay in the camera area. I'm going to go down until we come out of the other crystal. So now my needle is coming out of the other crystal. Uh, there. Okay. We're going to put on three more beads and go through the W bead on our little end. Now, one thing you want to make sure you do is if your thread is coming out on the left side, you want to enter that bead on the right side then and vice versa. And that will make your hanger lay nice and um, uh, centered. If you go in to the bead the same side as your thread was coming out on the other side, it's your hanger is going to be kind of wonky. So make sure you go into the bead on the opposite side. And there you go, you got a hanger. Now what you should do, because this hanger is going to hold up your ornament and it's going to take a lot, it's going to catch the most of the stress. I would thread back through all of those beads again and just do the whole path actually a couple times. And that will, you know, I would go up all the way over, back through, and then all the way back again, and then really finish off that thread nice and tight because that's going to be holding up your ornament and you don't want that to break. And, you know, all the kids are going to be grabbing it off the tree and going, oh, isn't that the cutest thing you ever saw? So you don't want it to break. You want it to um, have some strength in there. So put a bunch of thread in that area. So that's all there is to adding the hanger. So now we're going to move on to uh, the tassel. Okay, I'm going to show you guys how to do the tassel. So here are the directions for the tassel. And what you want to do is cut your, get a piece of cardboard and Cut yourself out a square that is the size of your little tassel guide. And then you need to take your floss and you want to remove your um, whatever these little these wrappers are. That's a good word for it, wrappers. You want to remove the wrappers and then you're going to re uh, wrap that thread of that floss around your tassel guide because we only want our tassel this long we don't want it as long as the floss is it'd be too long wouldn't look uh proportional 
So once you get, now one thing on those tassel directions, if I were going to rewrite these, which I probably will, I would switch three and four because um, when I first did it, I took them off. But the second time I did made a tassel, I kind of thought, um, well, that was silly because you've already got, oops, sorry. Oh. Okay, camera. All right, you've already got all your floss thread separated. So you can just put your needle underneath all those threads right there like that and catch all of those. And so I'm using a double thread. You are not gonna see any of this, so it doesn't matter how ugly it is. If you wanna get ugly, this is the time to do it. So I've got a double thread with a big old knot and I went underneath all of those flosses and now I'm gonna catch the loop of my thread and pull it and see that corrals all that floss. And you might do it one more time, just for fun. Put it underneath all of those and pull it. Like I said, it can be ugly if you want. Now we're gonna take it off of our tassel guide. Maybe, there we go. Okay, so you have all your, all your threads corralled together. Now we want to get our little pearl, 14 millimeter pearl. It doesn't matter. I put a nice pretty white one in your kits, but it doesn't matter what bead you use because you're not going to see it. So now we want to attach the pearl to our tassel. And so once again, we just kind of go through the pearl and then um, through all that floss. And I'm gonna do it twice just for um, strength. I'll do it twice. Then what I did is I just held onto the floss like that. And I wrapped between the floss and the pearl. So that wrapping is gonna sit in this area right here. Okay. So I wrap that a bunch of times, there you go. And then tie a knot. And you can clip that. And you've got your tassel. Then what I did was I took some, and I used blue tape because blue tape comes off real easily. I just, I took the bottom of the tassel and I wrapped the blue tape around it. Now this does, this, um, when you cut the end to make your tassel, you can cut straight through that blue tape and you will, it will keep all of those uh, ends together and, uh, then you'll have a neat little, um, the end of your tassel will be nice and neat going across there. Um, it also works as a little point because now you're going to put it, okay. So we have our, our bottom part of our ornament right here and you're gonna take it and you're gonna thread it through Okay, there we go. There's the hole right in there. Right. And we're going to take it and we're going to thread it down through that hole. Okay. And pull it through and boop, there. Now the pearl is sitting in there. It's holding our tassel and that's not going to come out of there. See, I'm pulling on that pretty good. So that's not going to go anywhere. And then, uh, oh, and then um, you can, after you cut it, then I took a needle or a little scissors and I actually separated all of those floss threads. I sat there in front of the TV and just very carefully separated all those because it makes it a lot fluffier and nicer looking. It doesn't look like just plain old floss hanging there. 
Um, do it in front of the TV because if you sit there and you don't have something to keep your attention, you'll fall asleep and impel yourself on whatever sharp object you're separating the floss with. So there you go. That's that. Uh, let me make sure I covered everything. Yep. Cut it. Take your tape off and you're ready to go. Okay. The next thing I want to cover is the strips. Okay. The important thing, these little strips. Now, if you don't like the way I wrote the directions on how to do the strips, by all means, do them however you want. Flat peyote, for me, the reason I did it this way is when you're doing flat peyote, usually one end always has all the funky turnaround. Well, this is the funky turnaround. Is that it? Oh, no, wait, there isn't one. Never mind. Um, oh, yeah. This would be the funky turnaround right here. But anyway, usually when you're doing flat peyote, the funky turnaround is on oh, always on one side. And that means that that one side has a lot more thread in it than the other. And it really does make it look different. So in doing it my version, at least you're alternating which side all the thread is going on. And uh, but if you are comfortable doing it another way, by all means, do it. That's just adding uh, the strips, and it's pretty self-explanatory in the directions. Um, now, I put mine on the bottom, and the instructions tell you to add it to the bottom one. And the reason I did that was because I had a really good thread. I had just added thread, and so I had a really good thread there, and so I just used that thread. If my really good thread had been on the top, I would have done it up there. It does. The point is, it doesn't really matter if you add all those little strips to the top or the bottom. It doesn't really matter wherever your, your good thread is. Um, so, okay, but now we're going to talk about uh, zipping them together. Okay, first thing I want to say, okay, first thing you really need to do is make sure that you line everything up all nice and pretty. So it's like on this ornament, I've got all the different color stripes. So I wanna make sure when I zip it together that I've got a red mapping up to a red. Unless you don't want that and you want a green mapping up to a green, but I wanted my reds matching. At any rate, what you do need to do is make sure that not only are these stripes matching, but these in the in the top part of your end and in the bottom part of your end are all mapping up also. So you just need to keep turning it until you find that perfect match, which right now mine is right there. So you can see that this stripe, this red one, this red one, and then the same stripe down here on the end. Okay, they're all lining up. So it looks really nice. And then you're going to start zipping it together. And you're going to attach these stri uh, strips to the top portion. Now, where are my directions? Here they are. So the directions show you how to zip them together. It's very easy. And what I want to say is this. I would like for you to follow this, these thread paths that I have listed out for you because you want to make sure that there is a thread going from your strip to your top center tube portion. And you want to make sure there's that outside thread, because if you don't have the thread on this side, if it's on the inside, this area is going to gap open and you won't have a pretty, um, your strips won't look pretty. So you want to make sure you've got that outer, outer thread going there to connect this, this little white guy to that gold guy. And then you just come down through your, this, uh, this line of beads and then through the top. And once again, on the outside, you're gonna want to circle around. I do step one and then uh, step two. You circle around just to connect this bead to that one with that thread on the outside so it doesn't gape open. 
I hope that makes sense. Anyway, if it doesn't, make sure you read my directions. I always can't. I can usually draw it better than I can say it. Um, so just you want that outer thread always on the outside of the strip so that it doesn't gape open and it looks nice and pretty. And okay, I think that's all I have to say about that. Let me check, make sure. Okay, now we're gonna move on to the ribbon. Now the ribbon is, um, once you get all your strips attached, you wanna attach, you want your ribbon. So uh, you wanna put in your ribbon. So you just need to figure out where you want your bow. Well, I wanted my bow, um, I kind of want it to map up this area, come down and then the flat area. And I want my bow to sit right be in, in the middle of that area. So pay attention to where you're adding uh, your bow so that your, uh, where you're adding your ribbon so that your bow will come out in the right place. So I just, you're just gonna go in, you know, weave it in and out. I use, um, I use a tweezer. Actually, I use all kinds of things. I, uh, you can use a safety pin. It's just weaving in and out. I just have, happen to have this little tweezer here, so we'll grab it. And you just in and out. Make sure you keep your little polka dots, if that's what you want to show, going the right direction. All right, and then yeah. we'll all get vertigo watching the camera go crazy. Okay, I need to pull this out just a little bit more so I have more room to tie my bow. Now, it, if your uh, ribbon kind of bends on you, you can, uh, you can readjust it once you get your bow tied and make it look prettier. Um, so then you just tie a pretty bow. Now, this ribbon I have is much larger than the ribbon I put in your kit, and that's okay. It's gonna make a really big, fun bow. I subscribe to the theory that if it's worth doing, it's worth overdoing. So if I have a bigger bow, I don't really care. Let's see. So there you go, nice bow. And then, uh, of course, you may wanna work with your little bow a little bit, get it to how you like it, and then cut off your ends and that's all there is to adding the bow. Wow, that's a big bow. We're gonna work on that one. But anyway, then you'll trim your ends and you have got your Dolores' Circus. Okay, so that ends the uh, demonstration portion of this. I'm gonna go ahead and stop the recording.